This week, we're gonna address one of the most common questions in the instant universe. Do I want the Polaroid Sun 660 or the Impulse AF? What in the wide world of 600 cameras should I even be doing here? I'm confused and that doesn't feel good. Well, first of all, calm down and we're gonna talk it out. I got some information, just be patient. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and this week we're gonna talk about two classic Polaroid cameras that put many people at a crossroads. Which to pick, the Sun 660 or the Impulse AF? Like I said in the opener, this is one of the most common questions I've gotten over the last year. And I make YouTube videos, so I don't know why I've been using the written word to explain this when I have a camera to talk to that sometimes talks back to me, but I don't know why that is. And if you know anyone that can help with that, please let me know in the comments. It's been just over a full calendar year since I launched this channel, and the very first two videos that I released featured the Impulse AF. One was a review and the other was a breakdown all about the sonar autofocus, which both of these cameras have as a feature. So it's quite fitting that after a completely uneventful year where nothing really happened at all across the world, we circle back and talk turkey about these plastic delights. All right, so the Sun 660 and the Impulse are two 600 film cameras that Polaroid released in the 80s after expanding its product line beyond the slower speed SX70 film. The cameras were intended to reach a wider market with their lower price point, fun designs, and greater variety. Many cameras of this era are extremely similar and to this day sell for similar prices. So folks don't know what the heck to start out with if they're peeping the web for a potential starter cam. They look the same, they cost the same, what am I doing? Hopefully I can help you out here. One of the most important things to consider initially is that there are basically only two types of Polaroid integral film cameras. There's the SLR cameras like the SX70 and SLR680 and there's the plastic lens cameras which are everything else. The SLR cameras are premium tools with glass lenses, manual focus, through the lens viewfinders, and legendary design. The plastic lens cameras are fun, playful, nostalgic, cheaper, and offer basic point and shoot functionality. I say this because it's important you know that if you're deciding between an Impulse AF, a Sun 660, a Sun 670, a One Step 600, or any of these other countless varieties, the lenses are basically the same. That means besides the small differences in features, the photographs that come out of these cameras will essentially look identical. One isn't gonna produce a higher quality picture than the other. That being said, with the Sun 660 and the Impulse being two of the more well-known varieties of 600 cameras, and if you're trying to decide between them, there are a couple things which do set these apart. First things first, the flash. One of the benchmarks of the Impulse AF is that the flash is always activated. Pressing down on the flash unit and popping it open is literally the mechanism that turns the camera on. So there is no way to disable that. There are many folks who like that or don't mind that the flash is always on. At a certain distance outside, you might not even notice that the flash is activated because in broad daylight, it can only do so much at certain distances, but in lower light or close up, the flash is very apparent. And that's a look, you know, shout out to the strobe lovers who dig that aesthetic. It's very iconic of the Polaroid picture vibe. Now, with the Sun 660, there's a bit of a different story here. This camera does have a large fold out flash unit, which is part of its very iconic design, but it does have the ability to override that flash. Instead of a toggle switch like some later cameras, the shutter button has been cleverly segmented so that you can fire the flash with the outside button or take a photo without flash with the second trigger behind it. Boom, boom. It's a very interesting idea. And if you're not trying to commit to all flash, all day, all week, Occupy Wall Street, this feature is by far the biggest difference between the 660 and the Impulse AF. So I'd say that's a pretty big tick in the advantage column for the Sun 660. But there is one more feature that distinguishes them and that is the 10 second timer, which is only present in the Impulse AF. Both of them have tripod sockets on the bottom here, but it is only with the Impulse that you can actually set the camera up on the tripod, take a few steps over there, you know, smile a little bit, be serious. 
hit the dab, basically decide the face you're gonna make, and then boom, the sonar autofocus and the shutter trigger, and there's your photo. In my opinion, having that timer is very clutch, and for some, it might make the impulse more desirable than the 660. I'm just giving you the facts right here. Like, I'm not telling you which to get. It's all a matter of preference. You got the flash override, you got the timer. What's going on in your head right now, folks? What do you think? What do you like? Let me know what's going on in your head right now in the comments. The last thing that tends to go into the decision to buy a Polaroid camera is the aesthetic and practical design of the thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're investing in a cool accessory to go with your icy hypebeast streetwear fit, and you want a camera with the vibes to match. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, okay. I think in this category, the Sun 660 has the more iconographic Polaroid design. Besides the vintage one steps, this is probably the camera body that is most closely associated with the nostalgic brand. However, this beautiful Blue Boy is a custom design, and the actual stock models are available in a pretty plain dark color. There is a gold one which was produced for Polaroid's 50th anniversary, which our boy Matty Ice is known to rock, and it is pretty sweet. But unless you go for a customized version, it's not really the most vibrant looking camera. Other Technicolor treats like the Cool Cam or the various other awesome special editions that a company like Retrospect offers, salvages, and makes their own, these cameras, they're not autofocus models. If the autofocusing feature matters to you, the Sun 660 just isn't offering much to you on the color spectrum, but you could hit up someone like Upcycled Classics who does awesome mods, changes the face plates, puts some sweet colors on there. Really happy with how this one came out. I uh, got this one a couple years ago and they go in and out of stock. So keep an eye out for those upcycle classics, shout out. The Impulse conversely does have a bunch of stock color varieties. Purple, blue, jade, what a color, are available for the autofocus models. While typically the cheaper options will be found in gray or black. At the very least, you got options. You may also find it wild and wacky that the camera has more of a binocular style ergonomic design. You know, like, or birding, you know. Checking out birds out here. And with a larger viewfinder than the 660 and a build that is more in the visual language of the Polaroid Spectra cameras, which were coming out around the same time, you know, you might dig that kind of design style better. It's definitely a different vibe. And lest we forget, this thing is a certified doinker. I don't think you could say the same about the 660. So if you're in the doinker squad, this one might be for you. I don't know. I'm, I'm having second guesses and I own both. So finally, in terms of cost, the 660 and the Impulse can be had for a range of 10 to 30 bucks. Really inexpensive and a great gateway drug if you're interested in just trying out Polaroid but aren't sure if you wanna buy a newer iType camera like the Polaroid now, which is very shiny looking because it's new, or you wanna just go like balls to the wall, pardon my French, and buy an SX70 immediately and just live a life of instant crime. And much like the SX70 vs. SLR680 showdown, I don't think we're gonna do a pros and cons segment for this episode. In fact, I know we won't because I already planned this episode. Uh, because this entire video is a pros and cons segment, so hopefully this helped. Feel free to drop any additional questions in them damn comments. And thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and very lightly, very lightly and delicately press that subscribe button. Like, give it a little half press. Press it all the way down, you know. But make sure you press it all the way down because I want, I, I need you to subscribe. Stay tuned for more views, breakdowns, shoots, guides, and all things instant. Bye.